In the last Czech parliamentary elections, the Communist Party of Bohemia and Moravia, KSCM, got only 3.6% of votes, thus failing the 5% limit needed to get into the parliament. It is for the first time since 1948 that communists will not be represented there. With this, the last bastion of radical life in whole Central Europe has fallen. The Polish Communist Party is facing persecutions by the far-right movement. Support for Hungarian Workers' Party is around 0.3% and German d Linke, similarly to Czech communists, lost elections. Number of articles has already tried to explain what really happened to Czech Communist Party, but none of them did a serious Marxist analysis of the situation, so we accept the challenge. In this video, we will explain the failure of KSCM and try to predict the future of communist movement in our country. In 2013, the right-wing government riddled with corruption scandals collapsed and there were new elections. This presented a major opportunity for Communist Party. The people were fed up with traditional political parties and wanted a change. Guys Cham never had any real corruption problem and no communist member of parliament after 1989 had ever changed his political affiliation. Thanks to all of this, communists look like a trustworthy party. However, any room for big election gains was soon blocked by a new anti-corruption movement funded and led by the second richest man of Czechia, Andrei Babiš. His ANO movement, ANO in Czech means yes, gained 18% of votes in elections and together with the Social Democrats who won 21% and with Christian Democrats formed a centrist government. Communists with 15% ended again in isolation. Mood of communist voters started to shift. KSCM was uh, in parliament ever since the fall of communism, but because it was always ignored by other capitalist parties, it could never realize any major program promises. And what is the point of voting again and again for a party which can't carry through its election promises? In 2015, new problem arose for communists, migration crisis. Parties simply didn't know how to react to it. Big part of population was sharply against the acceptance of refugees, but communists always were internationalist, so they couldn't took too nationalistic stance. After much hesitation, party decided for compromise with a slogan, we prefer to help refugees in their own countries. It was catastrophic. Party struggled to get the message across. Many people don't know their stance on migration until this day. A new player has just appeared on the field. Czech businessman of Japanese origin, Tomio Okamura, funded anti-migration far-right party Freedom and Direct Democracy. His skillful use of social media on Facebook he has the biggest fan base of all Czech politicians, and patriotism lured many communist voters to him. Czech people feared the possibility of economical downfall of our country if we were to accept huge amounts of migrants who would need state financial support, which was needed by Czech citizens themselves. Furthermore, they didn't like the dictate of Brussels, which was clearly demonstrated by mandatory refugee quotas. Communist party didn't fight enough and thus lost their voters to politicians who lie, but at least appear to carry out some kind of an action. Fearing its fall, KSCM tried to gain some influence over the Czech politics, so communists decided to support Babish's minority government, which was formed in 2018 with the Social Democrats. It was for the first time since 1989 that communists were this close to the real power. However, this strategy was the last nail in the coffin. Babish had been surrounded by many scandals. He was accused of frauds with EU donations. 
in a case of starkness. Then the problems started piling up. Tax frauds, supposed kidnapping of his own son. This got to the point where a Twitter account named Julius Schumann started releasing compromising materials on a Babish. One of these materials was an audio recording of Babish giving orders to the main redactor of Idnes newspapers to release compromising information against his social democratic coalition partner. Idnes is one of the many news outlets owned by Babish Holding, Agrofert. All of these scandals led to the foundation of a movement called Millions Moments for Democracy, organization whose sole purpose was to undermine Babish's position by orchestrating protests and propagation campaigns in favor of other right-centrist parties like Pirati ODS and many others. Communists gave their support to the government, but then state entirely passive. They didn't get the message to the masses and didn't fight for them enough. The inability of communists to push through their own agenda was clearly shown in their vain efforts to pass into law a mandatory five weeks holiday for workers. They weren't capable of carrying out even this small reform. It was effectively blockaded in parliament by ANO and other right-wing parties. Overall, reputation of KSGM was shattered because of the support of Babish's government and by that they only showed party's short-sighted, opportunistic side. Thanks to the efforts of million movements for democracy, the parliamentary elections of 2020 were reduced to one topic, Andrei Babish himself. Babish and Tomio Okamura tried again to play a migration card. Babish, in his book, shared it before they will cancel it, which was probably written by his chief PR advisor Marek Prchal, portrayed himself as a defender of Czech Republic against the hordes of refugees. Communist Party wasn't capable of effective reaction to either of these two topics. It couldn't criticize Babish because they were supporting his government for a pretty long time and they still struggled with migration. At the same time, the satisfaction with party leader Wojciech Filip only grew. In his 10 years of leadership, KSCM was steadily declining and during the elections he was accused by other party members of neglecting party electional meetings and focusing instead on his own personal campaign. And now we are at the end. Communist leadership, reflecting the disaster of the elections, finally changed. Wojciech Filip, as a party chairman, was exchanged for a Euro Parliament member Katerina Konečna. Konečna has the biggest following on social media among all communist politicians, and during her years in the Czech national politics, she was the youngest member of parliament thus shattering the stereotype of Czech politics that only old people are communists. Konečna and her team have set the goal to reform and carry the party towards a new era, but we wouldn't see this new era as something absolutely different from the previous one. Time will tell, but it's better than doing nothing. As their presence in politics has been hindered, Communists are going to appoint Josef Skala as a candidate for Czech presidential elections of 2023. Skala has a reputation of being one of the few true Marxists in KSGM. However, in reality he has strong nationalistic and pro-Russian stance. Given the dire financial situation of Communist Party after the lost elections, Skala presidential candidacy is a mere gesture rather than a real political act. Even if he would be capable of gathering 50,000 signatures for getting into the presidential race, his campaign will be really limited. However, there is a much bigger possibility. The new disastrous government of ODS can't handle emerging and prevailing crises, housing crises, energy crisis, rising inflation, insufficient pensions, etc and will prepare soil for a desire to change. But 
Even if the Kaiser M could capitalize on this fact, you think that opportunism in their ranks would win again. Kaiser M needs to clear its ranks to re-establish contact with the masses and to bombard any non-communist government with requirements and expose the true face of capitalism. KSCM needs a new radical approach, which is, we fear, unable to adopt at the current time.